Barbie has been firmly cemented as the leading toy brand when it comes to girls dolls. They have a decades long history as establishing the preeminent form of the doll for girls. And over the years they've produced all sorts of dolls and accessories, vehicles, ponies, everything you can think of to support the brand. But in recent years they've become a bit more experimental. They recently acquired the DC license and started to make some dolls based on popular female superheroes. We've seen characters like Supergirl, Batgirl, Black Canary, and of course, Wonder Woman. But in 2016, in a curious move, Barbie decided to do something a little bit different to tie in with the film Batman vs Superman. Time has not been kind to this film, its critical success is debatable at best, and it has garnered a reputation for being one of the disappointing superheroes franchises. But I think it's important to remember that back in 2016, there was a lot of anticipation for this film, and there was a lot of buzz around it, and there was an expectation that the film was going to be a monster mega hit like The Avengers. And I think Barbie saw an opportunity to get in on that market. They already had the license to some of these female superhero dolls, why not expand it to the males as well? And rather than using the Ken body, which wasn't really going to work for the likes of Superman and Batman with their hyper-masculine forms, they decided to break with tradition and make a new doll that was more screen accurate. And as a result, we got this Batman and Superman figure. And that's what I want to take a closer look at today. So, to begin with, as usual, I'm going to start looking at the packaging. The packaging is obviously mostly just a window display. Uh, behind them we can see the Batman vs Superman logo, and on the front there, at the very bottom, we have an image of each character. This is more of a painterly style, uh, rather than a movie photograph or a photograph of the toy. I think this is a very presentable and very displayable packaging, and I think they've done a nice job of this. The reverse of the packaging is identical for both characters, and again, we can see an illustrated image of Superman and Batman. Very nicely done. Uh, the background is a little bit dull, it's just the grey background there, and there's a little bit of a bio about the two characters uh, and the context in which they meet. I'll start off by looking at the last son of Krypton himself, of course, Superman, uh, who in my opinion is actually the weaker of the two figures, but that by no means means that this is a poor figure because it really isn't. Uh, visually, it's very striking. I think they've done a nice job of replicating his costume here. It's bright, it's colourful, that cape is incredibly vivid red, and I love how much material they've given for that cape because it's really <laughs> very effective. And I think the overall design is very screen accurate and is very nicely done. I should point out that each figure actually comes with its own plastic display stand which is quite nice and it slots together very easily. One of the things I don't like about this figure is the red boots. They are a rubber one piece, uh, it's only one tone, it's only got that one colour of red and it looks a little bit cheap. This is only further compounded when we look at the back, the reverse, and we can see there's that unseemly uh, gap there, that little slit, uh, which looks terrible. Like really, why? Why did they do this? It just makes no sense. Superman's suit is all one piece, which is made out of cotton, so there's no hard plastic pieces, there's no extra layers, there's no other textures in this figure, I'm afraid, which is very disappointing. That said, I do think they've done a nice job of replicating the design of the suit, they've made efforts there to capture the sort of the armoured effect and those ridges, and they've added a bit of metallic paint for what should be his belt. The S on his chest, however, is a solid plastic piece that has been sewn into the costume. And this just helps with the texture and just makes it feel a little bit more vibrant. So I'm really glad that they opted to do this. For his cloak, they've decided to add a Velcro piece and attach the cape that way. So you can whip it off nice and easily or reattach it with no great difficulty. Okay, and on to the greatest weakness of this figure, which I have to say I think is the likeness. To be fair, I do think they've caught something of a likeness of Henry Cavill in this sculpt. The problem is, is that it's just too soft, and obviously this feels like what you'd expect from a Barbie Superman. This feels a little bit Ken-like, uh, so the features are a little bit too soft. There's unnecessary detailing like the eyelashes, which definitely feminizes the face. And his jaw is a little bit more aquiline than the square jaw of Henry Cavill. All of this just serves to undermine the actual likeness and just stops it from being a very authentic and screen accurate sculpt. And I'm left scratching my head as to what the aim Barbie had with this figure is. I've assumed that they were hoping to break into a new market, into the action figure market, but this feels very much like it's been Barbie eyes, so he's part of the Barbie group. I'm not, I'm not quite sure how that fits, to be honest. So, in terms of the articulation, he does have the ball jointed head and I love this, this works perfectly, so he can spin his head all the way around, he can lift it up and down, a really 
good range of motion there. And yeah, I think this is perfect. So I could not fault this. It looks really smooth. It looks really seamless. And I just think, yeah, spot on. So great articulation in the head. He's got ball jointed shoulders. Uh, so he can kick his arms out a fair distance. Uh, there is some hindrance with the material though, so it doesn't go quite all the way. He does have the bicep swivel and he's also got the single jointed elbow, but that actually hinges in more than 90 degrees, so that's pretty solid. He's also got the wrist swivel, of course, and it also hinges, so again, uh, pretty solid articulation. However, the big weakness is there is no waist swivel and there's no ab crunch and there's no chest joint, so there is no articulation at the torso whatsoever. He does have some hip articulation, so he can kick his legs out a good distance and kick them forwards and back, but there is something a little bit dodgy about this connection that reminds me a little bit of the Megos, uh, because it does seem to dislocate quite easily. So I'm assuming he's not held together with rubber bands, but it, it is unusual, it's not what I'm used to seeing. He does have double jointed knees, which is great, and he's got articulation in the foot, but because of the boots, he can't really move it up or down. Sadly, he doesn't come with any accessories, but this is Superman, so we're not really expecting too much from him anyway. Uh, overall, I think this is a very nice looking figure. I think there's some nice effort here. I think the, the standout is the cape. I love this cape. I think it's an amazing job with it. Um, but otherwise, I think the likeness is quite soft, and I think it really lets the figure down. Plus, the lack of texturing in the costume is disappointing. Okay, next up we have the Batman. Now, I have to say, this is the stronger figure of the two, and everything that disappointed me or let me down with the Superman, they seem to have addressed and fixed with this figure. First off, the overall presentation is pretty fantastic. I mean, this is a very good screen accurate likeness that we see in the film. He also has a lot more textures. So straight away, the bat symbol, like Superman to be fair, is a hard plastic piece that's sewn into the costume. Okay, this is a good start. This time he has a solid utility belt. This is a solid piece. It's nicely colored. There's lots of gold and black, different colors in there. And it is a physical piece that straps around him. Okay, this is looking really good. Then we've got his gauntlets. Again, this is a separate piece. And it looks as if it's made of plastic. However, it's not. It's actually a very, very thin, soft rubber but the effect is really, really good. Likewise, on the boots, there's more detailing here. These look more solid than they actually are, and there's much more closer attention to detail by painting in the steel toe caps. Unfortunately, yes, he does still suffer from the same issue as Superman. The behind the boots there, there is that unseemly slit, which just looks stupid, and I don't know why it's there. And then we've got the cape. Now again, the cape, they give us plenty of material here. It's a nice, big, lavish cape that you can throw around them. And I love that they give us this much material. I would say I'm slightly disappointed. Whereas Superman, it's felt like quite a luxurious, soft cotton. This is a very thin, very flimsy leather effect material. Uh, however, the overall look, the presentation of it is great. And best of all, he actually comes with an accessory. He actually comes with his batarang. And this looks like a perfect replica of what we see in the film. So top marks for accuracy. Now, as an added bonus, his cowl also comes off so we can have a Bruce Wayne head underneath. Again, a really nice touch. However, when you flip the figure around, you can see again, there is that unseemly sort of split there going up the back of the neck into the head, which doesn't look so great. There is a way of circumnavigating this though, and that's to do with the cape. When you reattach it, if you attach it around the cowl, you can cover some of this up. And underneath, this is the Bruce Wayne head. So, as you can see here, there's definitely an attempt. They are striving to get a likeness of Ben Affleck. Definitely. This is a completely different sculpt to what we see with the Henry Cavill. However, it does seem to suffer from the same problem. A lot of the features are softer than they should be. Those eyelashes are there again, which, like I said, just feels like it feminizes at the face. And, yeah, it makes me want to keep the cowl on. Okay, so final thoughts. I think these are really fun figures. I think they are very nicely produced. I think there is an attempt to have accuracy and attention to detail here, particularly in the Batman. And the overall result is actually pretty impressive. But there's definitely some glaring issues with these figures too. For a start, I think the articulation is a little bit troubled. Overall, it's pretty solid, but to have nothing in the waist is going to be a big problem for an action figure. Maybe not so much with a doll, but definitely for an action figure. Then there's the likenesses. I think these are the weakest part of these figures. And of course, it is a major part of, the, of any action figure is how strong the likeness is. And it's a shame because I think the likeness actually is pretty strong. There's, a, there's definitely an earnest attempt in the head sculpt to do an accurate job of what we see on screen and replicate those actors. However, I believe there's a deliberate attempt here to soften them and feminize them. And I think it compromises the overall sculpt and the effect that we want from our action figures. 
And then finally, what's going on with those boots? What, <laughs> what is the problem? Why have they got those slits in the backs of them? Like, it just looks awful. And it's just the same because otherwise they're nice quality figures. And I think all this drives me back to my central complaint. And that is, I'm not quite sure who the figures are aimed at. Are these aimed at a new market? Boys toys in the Barbie line trying to appeal to the action figure collector? Are they meant to be boys toys that are meant to be played with and not really given the high quality treatment that, you know, collectors would expect? Or are they actually meant for the traditional Barbie audience? Are they meant for little girls? If so, then I think it's definitely misjudged because this isn't the kind of franchise that's going to appeal to little girls. Perhaps with some of the Marvel characters, but not so much with the DC Cinematic Universe, which is a lot darker. Or is it none of those options? Where Barbie going for something else that I'm just not seeing and not feeling? In any event, this feels like a little bit of a frustrating release because I feel like they got so much right and there's such a lot about these figures that I actually really, really like and I think they nailed. And then there's just these other drawbacks that just really disrupt the whole thing. But overall, I'm really glad to have these figures in the collection. I'm always happy when a toy company offers a 12 inch collectible that isn't at the Hot Toys price point. And I do think these are really, really cool figures to have in the collection. And if nothing else, they're definitely unique. I hope you enjoyed the vid. If you did, please do give it a like. Uh, and remember to subscribe as I'll be posting more videos soon.